Good morning, students of Girls High Art 1 and 2. Today we are going to uh, look at a demonstration on how to create salt dough. Salt dough is normally associated with um, homemade uh, sculpting, creating a homemade sculpting medium. Usually it's played with by uh, younger children. Um, and it's just something made with ingredients that are easily obtained around the house. Um, since we are on remote learning right now, uh, and I still want to uh, keep this curriculum relevant and challenging, I want to explore this idea of texture and why not in a very three-dimensional way with the use of clay. Since we don't have clay, most of us at home, unless you're a ceramic artist, uh, we're going to use salt, flour, and tap water. Lukewarm tap water, which means it's just slightly warm. One cup of salt, that's all you need. Two cups of all-purpose flour, and one cup of lukewarm water. The materials you need are a big bowl, or a large plastic Tupperware container would also be fine. I like a mixing bowl, a large mixing bowl, because then all of the ingredients fall toward the middle and it's easier to mix with this type of shape. I just went to our local grocery store. Our salt, which is a generic table salt, was 59 cents for this uh, one pound, 10 ounce container, 26 ounces of salt. That's more than enough for our project. Bag of all purpose flour is $2.79. So it is $3 and exactly 38 cents. Very, very doable. Tools you may need are the large bowl or, or a large uh, kind of basin shaped bowl, tray with kind of taller sides. A uh, spatula is helpful to scrape the sides of the bowl. A fork, a regular uh, teaspoon, and you don't need anything else really. I mean, if you have a knife, a knife is Salt dough is really good um, after you shape and mold your dough with your hands. Pretty fairly, it's pretty much done with your hand. You will put it in the oven at around 200 degrees for several hours to help let it dry. So if you let it air dry and let's say there's a lot of humidity in your home, it can get moldy. So to kind of help it start off on the drying process, uh, it would be good to put it in the oven for about two or three hours at around 200 uh, to 250 degrees, actually, 250 degrees, especially if your piece is large and thick. So let's start with this. One cup of salt, two cups of all-purpose flour. So it is, you need double the amount of flour. So that's the ratio. So if you wanna make a larger piece, just basically take the um, recipe and double it or triple it, depending on how big you wanna make your piece. So when you measure out flour, you put the flour in the open container, take the, the back edge of a knife, as long as it's uh, straight, and you level it off in order to get exactly one cup. So like it has a flat cup. And then, there we go. That's one cup and let's do it another cup in here. Okay. So do another cup in here. Okay, that's two cups. And now the salt. The salt is one cup of salt. So we're gonna pour this into the one cup measuring cup. And we're gonna just level it by very gently shaking it flat because the grains of salt will kind of level themselves if you uh, give it a slight shake. So it doesn't have to be like um, exact. It doesn't have to be like you're creating some sort of uh, complicated science uh, 
science experiment solution. Um, if it's a little short of a cup, if it's a little over a cup, it's not going to hurt anything. So like this, looks pretty level. Yeah, that's about a cup. So we're going to put it in there. So before everything kind of gets messy, let's close up our bag of flour. I put it in an extra Ziploc bag because these little uh, paper bags of flour and sugar comes in. Is a, they always rip and leak. And close our salt and let's put that off to the side. And we're going to take our spatula. And I know it looks, it feels very, very much like we are making some sort of pie crust or baking something. But we are making salt dough. So pre mix all your dry ingredients first. We do that in baking a lot too, pre mixing the dry ingredients or sifting them together. And if you have any little brothers and sisters, maybe make a batch for them and just to keep them out of your hair. <laughs> so sit over there with them. It'll keep them occupied for at least an hour. Maybe, maybe half an hour. <laughs> so now we're going to add the wet ingredients second. And this is asking for a cup of lu lukewarm water. Take the spatula and mix. Okay. And then you'll notice that the salt and the flour are clumping together. I don't use gloves for this because I want to actually feel the texture of this salt dough. And the salt dough is just going to clump up and stick to your gloves and then you won't be able to really move your fingers very well and it, it'll just be difficult um, to do anything. But if you want to wear gloves, go ahead but it will stick to your gloves. So if you notice, there's actually a lot more moisture inside the middle of these little clumps. So don't let the fact that there's still a lot of dry mixture deceive you. There is a lot of water in here still. So I would, I would start to oh, pull my sleeve up, start to with the hands now, knead the dough and really start to um, mash the pieces of the salt dough together to see really how much more water you need. So you kind of gather it up and squish it down and close your hand when you're squishing it down like this. Lift it up and squish it down. Do that or you could go like this, put it in your hand, squish it, knead it like this which is me taking two hands and going like this okay so starting to kind of coalesce stick together the more you need the dough the more uh, smooth it's going to become so we still have a long ways to go here from, from this point so I'm going to add a little bit more water each time. Now, if you have a little spray bottle, like a mister that you use to mist uh, plants, house plants, or mist your hair with, um, or anything like that, like, um, or maybe an old Windex bottle or a product bottle, cleaner bottle, that's all cleaned out that you could use as just a water a spritzer that would be nice because this salt clay you can really see it now coming together is going to start to dry around the edges and get crumbly when you work with it so the key would be to keep it moist okay I'm really pushing down on it I feel the graininess of the salt so I'm pushing down with the palm of my hand, gathering up the salt dough with my fingers, and then pushing down with this part of my hand. This is called the heel of the hand. So just do that. Okay, just getting all the flour. 
I still have it in the bowl. So the larger your bowl is, the easier it's going to be for you to manipulate and mix and knead this thing. I'm really pushing down with the heel of my hand and it seems to be getting smoother and smoother because the salt is dissolving and kind of becoming uh, mixed in with the salt, I mean the, the flour much better. Okay. Now if you don't have a, sp a little spray bottle, you could just get a little bowl of water and just sprinkle sprinkle on your work. You don't need anything fancy. There's always alternatives. So you could just go like this, sprinkle, sprinkle, wet your hands. You could just wet your hands a little too. Um, the best thing to st store salt clay is to get like a gallon Ziploc bag or get a cling wrap, which is a plastic wrap that you put over uh, bowls of food. And what you could do is keep it in your bowl and just cover it, or you could put it directly on the salt clay. So this is kind of coming along. This is a good texture. It's very pliable. It still kind of has a rough, grainy texture. So I might want to need it just a little bit more. Just get a little bit more water on there. Now, if it starts to stick to the bowl, you've gone too far and you've added way too much water. But this is a nice pliable salt dough. So this is my little kitchen scale that I use to just measure out ingredients. So let's weigh this by pound. That's 1.73 pounds. So it's almost one and three quarter pounds. So a little, a little short of two pounds of salt dough. When you are not using the salt dough, keep it, always keep it under wraps. I have a damp paper towel. I'm gonna keep that in there. It can't be sopping wet or it will stick to um, the paper towel make a difference and, and it'll make a mess. Um, and put it in a large Ziploc bag like this. Okay, so when you are not using it and it should store for about five days. So you have only a limited amount of time to work on this project. So we were going to, we're going to learn next about how to take this salt dough and do make a coil pot. The preliminaries for this project is for you to research ceramics of different cultures. I asked those who were finished our last project to look into ceramics of different cultures, whether it's African or Asian, or it's Mesoamerican, which is Mexico, uh, Guatemala, South America, also has pottery. Every culture has pottery in order to store food, to carry food, uh, they, and they are vessels used in everyday cooking. So there's even some pottery that is used to cook food and bake food so that became a very, very good invention and one that was necessary for uh, comfort and survival. So uh, I want you to just pay attention to the forms. This is at this, at this time you should be sketching in your sketchbook, taking note of some of these forms. Um, you should also be writing notes about what you observed. I want you to look at the textures that are used in the pottery. We're not going to create just smooth forms. I want to incorporate this next unit, which is texture into our pieces. So see if there was textures that were incorporated by stamping, um, by poking, piercing, um, even with a simple tool like a fork or even a, 
a spoon, you could get quite a few textures. You can make a texture with nearly anything. Tree bark, as long as the little pieces don't come off the tree bark. But as long as it is similar to what you see in the pottery of that particular culture. 